What's going on guys? So I am out here at CCRV in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I want to make a quick video kind of walking you through the different types of slides and the technologies and how they work because I think it's important, especially when you're picking out a unit and you want to understand what might be better or different between different units with different slides. So first, we're going to take a look at this Schwintech slide system. So hang tight, we'll be right back. All right, guys, so I'm gonna to try to make this video as simple as possible because I don't wanna use terms that might confuse folks. So I'm basically gonna to try to make this in a way that anybody watching it can understand what I'm talking about. So the Schwintech slide system is becoming very, very popular and it's been around for a while. It's been around for about 10 years. It's essentially these aluminum channels that are on the top and bottom. This is essentially a rack and pinion style system. It's attached to the side of the slide and you have a motor inside here which drives gears and a pinion that pull this slide in and out using this track. It's a very reliable slide system so long as you don't put it on a slide that's too long and too heavy. Most of the time you're gonna see those on your wardrobe slides and they're pretty reliable. What's also nice about them is if for some reason there's a failure or the motor gives out, you have the ability to push the slide in. You can actually reset it or you can put it in kind of a manual mode and still have the slide in, which is nice. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a fan of Schwintech when it's used on smaller slides. Next, what you're looking at is a good old fashioned rack and pinion system. So the rack and pinion system is exactly what it is. The rack is this long tube that comes out with essentially the teeth on the bottom and the pinion is the gearing arm that goes across that's attached to a motor. So the whole point of the system and how it's designed to work is that from the motor the gear simply turns and either extends or attracts the slide in or out. The only thing that is negative about this system is it's rather heavy and it requires holes in the frame that have to be reinforced in design form. This is definitely the most tried and true technology out there and it's the oldest technology. This is what you'll see on units that could be 20, 30 years old even. They've used this technology for a long time and you tend to see it most commonly on your very high-end units or most of your units that don't really focus purely on weight. If weight is a factor and they're really trying to keep the weight down, they'll generally switch to a Schwintech or a cable-driven slide system for that. But this is a great system in terms of user serviceability, as well as the only thing that can really fail on it is the motor. And if the motor does fail, you can always manually retract the slide, which is really nice. And when you manually retract it, you can bring it all the way in and tight up against the side so it's safe to travel with. The next slide system we're going to talk about is the cable-driven slide. So this is the AccuSlide system from BAL. This utilizes cables and pulleys to essentially extend and retract the slide. All of your mechanical components that make the slide work are above and on the top of your slide, on the inside actually. So from the interior perspective of your RV, this slide wall is going to stick in about four inches to accommodate the motor and all the cables and chains and everything that's on top of the slide. Now essentially the way it works is you have cables that come down this side and cables that go down the other side. Now four cables on each side. This cable right here does not pass all the way through inside. This cable goes in and it makes a sharp 90 degree turn up. This one does the same thing. It goes in, makes a sharp 90 degree turn up, and it does the same for the other side as well. So when this slide comes in, this cable's coming up and in like this, whereas when it's going in, you have another cable that's being extended out from the other side. Basically, the cables run down and they split off like this, top and bottom. And this specific system, in my opinion, is okay for small slides. Where you run into problems is your larger slides. Plus the fact that even though the cable is very strong, some of the connectors at the end and some of the other parts really need to be done perfectly to prevent the system from sagging or failing. Plus, the cable over time can eventually stretch or sag as well, so you want to be careful. The only thing I really don't like about this system is if you have a cable failure, unless you fix it, you're not really going to have any way of putting the slide in and securing it in place because these cables are what hold the slide in. So when the cable goes out, you're going to have to have it fixed. Otherwise, retracting or extending your slide is pretty much impossible. So that is really my only gripe with this system. If they came up with a redundant way of fixing that, or maybe even if they ran an additional cable as a backup cable, that might be something that I would prefer. But my biggest issue, again, is simply if a cable fails, there's not a lot you can do until you fix the problem. You really can't take it to your service department unless you get inside and, you know, use a strap to kind of hold your slide in. 
Now back to rack and pinion slides. Now there's really two versions of it. There's one version that uses an electronic motor and there's another version that uses a hydraulic pump. Now the hydraulic version simply is that. It's a hydraulic cylinder that extends the slide and it retracts the slide. When you have a hydraulic system, you really aren't gonna have independent control of your slides. You're gonna have to essentially follow the order that they're gonna deploy whenever you hit the slide out button. So in some cases they do valve it so you do have individual control, but in most cases it's one button and it extends all the slides in a certain order based on how the hydraulic fluid is kind of routed throughout the system. If you have a failure, you still have the ability to retract your slide, thankfully. That's one of the nice things about it. You would have to fix your hydraulic system, though, because if you have a rupture of a line, it can prevent other parts of your system from working, including your landing gear or your other slides. So that's the only reason why I'm not a big fan of hydraulic slides on the rack and pinion systems. Now the next slide technology, I call it the hidden slide system, even though it's more of like a flat pancake style slide system. Essentially what it is, is it's rails that are underneath the slide on the inside. So in this unit, the bed, which is in this slide, underneath it, there's a rack and pinion system that allows this slide to extend and retract using rails that are mounted inside of the coach. I really like this system. It's not designed for heavier slides, but it works really well and it's a very reliable system. Plus it's very user serviceable. So in the event it goes out, you can still get your slide to go in and out manually, which is really nice. But it also gives you a really clean slide. There's nothing exposed from the outside, and all your components essentially make up the first two or three feet of the interior of the actual bed space underneath the bed, so you never see it. So that's a nice feature of it. And then finally, the last system we're going to look at is this new LCI Slim Rack system. This is actually a rack and pinion system. Anytime you see a long channel like this with teeth in it or grooves in it, it's going to have a gear that essentially pulls it in and out. This is the rack. Your pinion is going to be the spinning portion that grabs a hold of this. So. A rack and pinion system like this essentially mounted to the side of a slide. You have a motor inside that has gears that run down to the top and bottom and simply retracts or extends this out. So of course this is fixed to the side of the slide. When it's all the way in you'll see it on the inside of the RV as well as the outside. It's interesting because it looks similar to a cable driven slide except it uses an entirely different principle to actually retract and extend. So this is a form of rack and pinion slide and it's actually more in common with the Schwintec slide system than the cable driven and slide system. This is relatively new and I don't know about the longevity of it but I imagine they've probably ran these things through hundreds of thousands of cycles to verify that they work well. It's definitely a robust feeling track. It doesn't feel as if it's flimsy and I'm really interested to see how long these things hold up in the long run. Um, what I like about it is it looks like it's fairly user serviceable and in the event you have a failure it seems like you'd still have the ability to put the slide in. But again I don't know enough about this slide and I don't know enough about the redundancies that it has to really give you my opinion on whether it's a superior product or not. I'm starting to see more units with it though, and I'm really interested to see what the failure rate's been as well as how reliable they've been. I've seen a lot of Jayco units with these, and I'm seeing a lot of Cedar Creek units with them as well, which are two reputable brands. So definitely something that I wanna know a little bit more about personally. So those are the six most common slide mechanisms you're going to see on pretty much all RVs. Actually, there is one other, and you traditionally see it on your off-road style motorhomes, where it uses a very interesting channel style mechanism to push the slide in and out. That is a very interesting slide. You don't come across it too often. If I see one again, I'll definitely do a video on it and how it works. But this is definitely what you're going to see on most of your travel trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up and we'll talk to you again very soon.